Hello everyone, praise be to God, and welcome back to another episode of Freddy Fisher Roofer's Maze Madness. So last time we made some custom levels using the in-game level editor, and we played them and showed that I was a very sadistic level designer. In this episode, we will not be doing that. In fact, we're not going to be doing anything involving the stuff that's normally in the game. But rather, this episode I'm going to show off two things that are technically in the game, but you're not allowed to access without using a little thing we call Scum VM. So Scum VM is basically, for those of you who don't know, it's like an emulator that lets you run the Scum engine, which is what the Humongous Entertainment games were built for. So once you have this running on Scum VM, it's pretty easy to download. You can just look it up. There's a lot of tips online. If you hit Control D, it brings up this little console debugger menu. And what we can do here is basically type in a specific room that we want the game to take us to, because essentially, games made on the Scum engine are composed of a bunch of different rooms. So this main menu, I believe, is room three or something like that. We got a bunch of different rooms. Some take you to the, just the title screen. Some take you to the opening credits. The first thing I want to show off is something really interesting. And if you've seen my Balloonorama and Dog on a Stick Let's Plays, you'll probably know what's about to come. If we type in room five and hit enter, this looks interesting. This is what we like to call the secret level editor. This is the full game level editor, and this is what the developers actually used for creating all of the levels in the game. So using this editor, you can actually make levels that are just as advanced as the ones you see in single player. You have access to all ten of the different worlds, you have access to all the different pieces like uh, kelp seed gates, or purple sea urchin gates, all the different enemies, and you can even make levels of bonus rooms. It's pretty cool. However, it's incredibly complicated to use, and I'm going to devote a separate video just on how to use this properly. I just thought I'd show it off, and it show yes, it does exist, and you can even look at and do a bunch of different stuff. It's pretty cool. You can toy around with it if you want, but generally speaking, it's a pretty tough editor to figure out how to use. And there are no tutorials online on how to use it, which is why I want to make a tutorial. Well, mine will be the first, yeah! So anyways, that's pretty much it. There's one other thing that they left in the game that I want to show off, and this is what's going to eat up the bulk of the video. So we go to room 5 and that happens, and you can also act, uh, you can activate this without using ScumVM, and I'll get into how to do that again when I make the video on how to make levels in this. Because although you can access this level editor in ScumVM, you can't actually run the levels that you create from ScumVM. It just doesn't work. You actually have to do that on just the natural environment, uh, like Windows XP or earlier, on which the game can run. It just won't work on ScumVM. But this next thing, if we type in room 6, this is, will take us somewhere that you need to use the Scum in, ScumVM in order to actually reach. This, I'm not even sure why it exists in the game, it's just something that they left in for reasons unknown, but it's fun, let's do it. Room 6. If you remember from my Putt-Putt Travels for Time Let's Play, or if you've played Putt-Putt Travels for Time yourself, you'll remember this game, this is Squoosh. This is quite a bit harder than it was in Putt-Putt Travels for Time, though. We've got uh, way more pieces to uncover, and the ball itself is faster, and I feel like the paddle we have is slower. Or smaller, at least. So, basically, for those of you who don't know what the heck I'm doing, it's kind of like Palm. You hit the ball with this little box and try to knock it into all the different parts. It looks like it is a sports team. I am not up on sports. I don't like them. Oh, holy cow! Yeah, look how fast that ball is bouncing around. The Seattle Sonics? I am not very good at this. And again, I have no idea why this is in Maze Madness of all games, but it is. It's kind of cool, but again, not sure why they chose Maze Madness to leave this in. It's, it's still left in the code in the source files, it's just there's no way to access it from the game. You have to get an emulator to debug and not hack the game to get in, but essentially call some commands that you're not supposed to call in the game to take us here. It's kind of interesting, that. I love all the little things left behind in these humongous entertainment games. It's really cool. There we go! And we, boss it. we blew it up. Yep, the Seattle Sonics. Okay. Um... Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm, again, not a sports fan, so I can't really appreciate that. Wow, now it's traveling really slowly. Um, that is Luther from Freddy Fish, yeah. Uh, what are we uncovering here? What the heck? I have not played this before. I have not solved all of these puzzles before. I knew this existed, but I never had the patience to solve it, so I don't really know what's gonna come. Holy cow. But maybe I'll have to put up a viewer discretion as advice, Fanal. I don't know what the heck this is. Oh, uh, no, that's going too fast. It's going too fast for my liking. I know I have unlimited tries, but still. Stop hitting the only parts that I've actually uncovered. Come on. Now. Oh, this is him and the junkyard dogfish from Freddy Fish. Okay. That's a very weird pose that Luther is in. Is he trying to eat Luther? That's a bit dark. Then again, in Freddy Fish 1, you can, uh, again, using developer easter eggs, you can literally have Eddie the Eel actually, honest to goodness, eat Luther in that game. Really creepy stuff. I did not do it on my channel because I did not have the means to use that easter egg at the time. I did not have ScumVM, nor did I have Windows XP running on my computer. I like this because it's not actually a 3D game, but it definitely gives you the illusion of 3D. I hope no one gets tired of this theme song, because it's gonna be playing for quite a while. My apologies. And now it's an official Color 4 Let's Play video. <laughs> Alright, let's go. Man, this is... It's really hard to knock it in the exact area you want it to. Um, I don't really know how to aim this. So I'm literally just throwing it around hoping that it hits it eventually. But it's resisting. Oh, come on, now! I'm getting closer. Nope. How many of these are there, I wonder? I hope there's not, like, a hundred, because I'm not doing all that. The nice thing, though, is if it turns out to be a while, I can just edit a lot of this out and skip to the end of the episode. But I'm sure you guys are all enjoying watching me suck big time at Squoosh. Yeah, you are. Oh, I don't have unlimited tries. Well, if this resets back to the first one, I... Yeah, I'm not solving that. Yeah, I'm not solving that. Sorry, not sorry. That's where we're going to leave it off for today, I guess. If you want to see it more in action, you're going to have to play Squoosh yourself. And ooh, the ball is still stuck on the menu screen now. A-plus programming, everybody. So, thanks for watching, all, everyone out there in YouTube land. I'm Colorful Artie. Tune in next time. This It'll be the last episode of Maze Madness, where I'll be showing off a tutorial, a full-on tutorial on how to use that secret full-on level editor. Hope to see you then. Until we meet again, have a great day, and God bless.